Well, it looks like it's breeding day. So we got a whole cluster, we got a bunch of bright oranges. So she's what we would say in standing heat, number 10 right there. So she's in standing heat. You can see a little swelling in the vulva on the back. Um, same with this one. Uh, all the bright orange patches say, I'm in heat. I'm in heat. I've been getting rode. And uh, please, please, where is the nearest bull? I need some attention. Um, the patches look like this, where they're gray until they get rubbed on enough to turn orange. And uh, there, there's a lot of, you know, they're animals. They're just, they just work off of instinct and stuff. And that's how they signal to each other of, uh, of that they're in heat. So sometimes one cow starting to run around jumping a bunch of cows, she could be bowling. She could be in heat, and we call that bowling, that she's just trying to get everybody's attention of, hey, I, I'm, in, I'm in heat. Would somebody please uh, take care of me? Uh, other cows, they, they won't bowl much like that, but when they are in a good standing heat, they'll stand there and let the other cows ride them. And so... We got a bunch of orange tags, so we'll get everybody locked in, in the corral system here, and then we will get the AI guy, the breeder, to come out, and uh, I had the catalog, so a couple weeks ago I got to pick out, me and the wife sat down and we picked out five bulls that we thought would be good bulls, between a couple good bulls for the first calf heifers, and some bulls for the older cows, and then uh, some bulls for the second calf heifers and uh, and so hopefully we got a nice mix of of gentlemen there and uh, we'll 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 get them caught and we'll get them bred later today everybody's caught that we need caught the calves will just run them through so they get used to it he's in there he's gonna give them the injection of semen and then she's on deck. And we just kind of. Oh yeah, we know you're here. <clears throat> We're just looking at <clears throat> body condition, age, how many calves they've had. Zoom out, and uh, then we kind of just scroll through the bowls and see which one we want for that cow. Works, works pretty slick. Inside the tub, this door swings around. And it sweeps and it directs the cattle. Then they just go up that lane. And then they're there. This is the no back. So if they try and back up, their tail head hits here, but when they go under it, it just lifts up. It's a good setup. I like it. Everything, everything is rounded edges and corners there's there's no sharp edges no harsh corners uh, everything from the whole the whole facility is designed for their safety our safety and quote unquote stress free but it never quite goes that easy all right it's day 2 of breeding and uh it's a little chilly i'm just getting the the shoot set up because overnight I leave it open overnight and uh, that way the cows let me spin you around we keep their lick tub in here so they get used to coming in and out of the corral so I leave everything open wide open overnight so we lock the elevator doors open zoom out and uh, I lift the no back up <coughs> leave this elevator door open <clears throat> and then I leave the head gate open so we'll take that out do that now we're ready we're ready for the first cow I'm ready for my close-up Mr. DeVille <coughs> this back elevator door I leave pinned up so it usually stays open so the cow waiting in the corral can see the cow in the alleyway and and kind of figure stuff out 
This one, we leave the pin the other way. So just a little bump when the cow goes through and it shuts on the next cow. That way, the breeder guy, he can open the pelt door, do his job, and uh, while that cow's on deck, and then we just open it, we just open it, and we're ready for the next one. And so it works pretty good. We're very slow with handling the cows. Everything's about calm, and uh, <laughs> everything's about calm, but they'll literally run you down with, Karen's got a bucket of corn on the four with her. So we don't feed corn. We're trying to be grass fed, but corn makes a fantastic uh, bait uh, to lure them into the system. And so I gotta go help. Well, we got a few scragglers, zoom out. It, uh, the wife walked ahead with some corn and then I just walked behind, bringing up the rear. Man, look at that alfalfa. Oh my God. If you would have told me a couple years ago that I'm gonna have cows out here trampling this down and I'm gonna have a facility set up in the middle of the hay field, I would have kicked my own butt. Man, that is some gorgeous stuff. But we're gonna move their hot wire in a couple days. We're gonna move their hot wire up to the ditch up there. So then this south parcel, we can make some hay off of it. Uh, man, oh man. We'll take a calves, we'll get a couple at a time. We'll open the whole system up when we're done with that cow and just let them walk through. That way they get used to it. Well, the breeding of the cows went really well. We got uh, five more, got some semen in them today, and we're giving the steers a new bedding bale. Since they're eating all this high protein, uh, all this high protein grass, then uh, we'll, uh, we give them some straw bales to chew on, and they, they eat it at their desire to uh, just kind of help their tummy do what it needs to do and uh so we're gonna she's gonna let me out and then we're gonna move their fence because they get a hot wire we have a hot wire so they only get so much pasture each day and uh we're gonna move that fence and uh that will be it for today